going to be covering the sales screen in this uh, video help, but before I go there, I want to explain some basic information. When you're setting up this application, you need to start by adding your customers. So you have a customer base in order to manage uh, the information for those customers. And as I stated in the customer screen, you can also have a generic one uh, walk-in customer uh, so that you can use that in case the person does not want to give you information as far as your sales or your sales are not requiring you to trap information about customers. When you're setting up the application, once you have customers, the first thing you need to do is to add inventory. Inventory is required in order to provide a basis for what you're going to sell, which means that you need to add all the products that you're going to be selling into the inventory screen. On the same note, in order to have inventory managing the data, you need to use the purchase screen to take the input of products that are being purchased and going into your inventory. The inventory basically just gives you the product identification information and the purchase actually supplies the products to the inventory system. When you add products on a purchase order, they automatically uh, populate the uh, inventory system and thereby, once those two things are in there, then they also provide you the ability to sell and invoice the, the products that were added through the purchase and into the inventory system. The last one, which is the supplier screen, is the vendors for the products that you're purchasing. And basically, those purchase products are supplied by companies, and that gives you the information for the suppliers. There are a couple of screens that are going to be covered separately that are proprietary screens for um, using uh, pricing of items and also for cash management as far as the cashiers are concerned, as far as bringing in informa in information and money on a sales by day or sales by hour, whatever way you want to collect your till information and money. So let's go over to the sales screen and discuss that screen. In the sales screen, the first thing you're going to notice, it is very similar to the customer screen. It has some links that you can go to different places on the application. It has additional links for a list view for the purchase screen. It has different reports or and or uh, different things to link to, like the invoice, the daily sales by store, the sales by product, and the inventory uh, by the store. Now, one of the concepts of this application is, is that you can have multiple stores. Multiple stores meaning that you can have one to the number of stores you want to include in this application. So this is a multi-user type of an environment where the name being on the cloud uh, in dictates that this is a multi-user hosted application. So when you're hosting an application, you are identifying the items that are being purchased by the store they're being purchased in. And up on this side, you're picking the customer from a drop-down list. And in a drop-down list, if you type the first few characters of the person's name, in this case, it's first and last name, that particular name would come up and it would drop the list down to fewer people. And this is happening when you add a new record. So when you add a new record, the first thing you're going to do is put the customer in there. Now, if you had a walk-in customer and that's the only thing you're going to use it for, that would be fine. If you had to take information from customers where you could then use their name in the future where they would be in your list, you would have to stop first and do the customer information as far as who your customers are. When a customer comes in for the first time, you can very quickly add that customer using the uh, approach that you have sales and whatever and you would like to have their information if you, they would like to give it to you so that you can either email them or send them information about uh, sales that are coming up in the future. At the same time, as you pick the name, it'll automatically fill in the information from the customer screen across and give you the uh, address, city, and state and province of that particular customer. The buttonology in this system allows you to go from one record to the next as it did in the customer screen and other screens by clicking plus to go to the next and minus to go to the previous. You add new records by clicking on the new record button. 
You find records by using the do find, put in the data that you're looking for, and then click the perform find. Once you've finished a find, you go and click the show all records to return all the records back into the current set of records. If you want to look at a list view, but you want to reduce the size of the list in the list view, you can do a find on this screen. And then when you go to the list view, those are the records that are going to show up in the list view. You can also do a search in the list view screen. Now let's go ahead and cover the actual air, uh, items in the tabbed interface on the sales information screen. This area down here is the rows in the invoice. So this is called a portal, and in this case, it's the sales portal. And this is also using a drop-down list system where it did like up here on the top, where if you type in the first few characters, like in this case, this is a uh, barcode number off of a product. You can take the number right off the product uh, and enter the first few characters, and it's actually almost faster than scanning a barcode. Not to say that a barcode is not going to be used and can be used. You can also, if you do not have a barcode of any kind on a product, either something you manufacture and you don't have a barcode on it, you can actually use the narrative of the actual item and that would be listed also in an alphanumeric setup within there, not being a number setup. So it'd be easy to find it by typing the first few characters of the product and it would be put into the system. Now, in the actual product information, you'll see that it gives the product name. In this case, Goodnight Gorilla is the name of a book. It is part of the Store 2 inventory, and the price at the end of the row shows you that it's a $10 item. So in this particular case, if I put that item in this line, you would see over here it did not change the uh, actual cost yet. You can see that it's got the correct uh, product name or number and the product name you can put a discount if you need to to reduce the price on this particular item here. Or what I've done is set it up so that you can click it, tie, uh, double click it, and what it does is it will update the screen and update the actual cost of the item based on the actual number that you used in here. So it makes it fairly simple to slide right through. So this field is picked. This one is auto-entered. This is not used unless you want a discount. This is the quantity that you're actually selling times the actual item cost. You pick from the drop down the tax rate. That'll automatically enter the tax rate and calculate the line total. If you do not have any tax in there, you'll notice that it takes out the tax and goes in and changes the total. At the end of the row, there's a button you can click over here that looks like a sheet of paper that will take you into the portal row for this particular item. If you click it, you'll be reading the information above here and the row and the reason for the portal is you can do finds in there where you cannot do a find in the actual portal itself. And if you wanted to delete a row in your uh, product line row, you can go in there and delete the row using the red icon in the record uh, individual record. Now, at the top of this, as you add information, it's going to automatically calculate all the figures up here giving your, your total uh, price for this particular invoice. On your business, you can add your own logo. And the information here that is auto-entered when you actually create a new record and add the new record, it puts the exact time to the second and the date of this particular invoice. If for some reason a client comes in and this may be a quote, you can come back later on if it was a quote and put the actual date of the invoice in here, even though the first invoice was stamped when you created it. And these cannot be edited, as you can see. So they're, they're locked in, where these can be changed if you want to change them. The store location is a drop-down, where you pick from the store list that you have in your business uh, for any sales location. And I did it as a store one through this number. And in the actual, when you click this store location link here, it'll allow you to edit this information. In the iPad, this would be a scroller, so you can't really edit it in the scroller but you can edit it on the sales location up here. And you can add as much information as you need to as far as the actual store and the city location and so forth. You can add that into the line here on the actual address. So this is the store number and the address. As far as the salesperson, another drop down, and the same situation where you can audit, edit, and uh, change 
the salespeople by going to that uh, screen and then changing it. You cannot change this drop down list in the uh, scroller on the iPad. This can all be done also on the cloud server as far as uh, when you're using the cloud server to add and edit this data. Okay, what we've covered is a review before we go to the next tab. You add the customer, you start the invoice when you create the uh, invoice, you add each row and add the information for the rows, and if you need to delete a row, you can do that in the individual record here. The next thing we're going to do, let's say for in, uh, instance that this customer is checking out and they have a balance that they have to pay, you go to the payment tab, there's a, another portal in here, and in the payment tab, what you're going to do is you're going to see the information at the top of the screen for what's due. And in this case, it's a $26 balance because we took out the tax. If you put the tax back in, it would zero back out. And you can see that in this case, the actual amount due is $169.23 was paid when now when we took out the tax, it's now $143.23. So you'd have to change this number to match the amount due, the $143.23 and then pay the 143.23 and it would go back to the balance uh, amount to do to zero. And then you put the method of how it's paid and the last four of a credit card or the number of the check that you're taking. There's an area at the bottom where you can make comments. If there's anything about the warranty or return of the product or whatever, you can put that in the bottom for whatever item is affected on the actual line items in the sales. This tab is the inventory status. What the inventory status does is that the portal shows the inventory for all stocked items by store location. No editing of this portal is required. What you would do in here is it's going to automatically add the items from the inventory in here in alphanumeric order and then by store and then the quantity of balance at each store and the price that's being sold for that particular item. It's the standard pricing for that item and the low level of the items. In this case, there is a minus here on this because the purchase order has never been written to stock the inventory. So if you put a demand on the system, you're going to get a negative number, and that is across the board. So later on, if these items were purchased and then fed back into the inventory system, then the actual quantity of received items would be populated here. And as they're used, they will be disappearing because every time you use the item in this record on the row, it's going to reduce the amount of stock in inventory and reflect that in the inventory status tab. Now, there are other things that are related to the invoice uh, where you need to understand that when you're using the invoice, that there are reports that are required and all the information that you're putting in needs to be thorough. Don't skip or not include items in this because then it will affect the report information and when you're doing a find in a report, if you're missing information, like in this case, the name of the actual item was not added in the inventory. So you need to go back to the inventory and have that as a filled in field. And this is a demonstration of what's missing. The next thing and the last thing we're going to cover here is that you can create a discount that will remove a, a portion of the actual cost. It will not change the cost in the field. But what it will do is it will affect the final number of the sale for the item uh, based on the actual reduction here. So $1 was taken off of this, the taxes were added, and then the reduction was taken on the final calculation to take out the discount. With all that information, uh, you should probably view this uh, video more than once to get the concept of all the things that are being done here. Now, if this is being used on the browser through another device, where you have the web browser. On the web browser, when you're on the cloud, you need to commit the record, if you make edits in it, to save the changes. If you do not want to save the changes, then you click on the revert, and it'll revert back to the uh, prior information that was on the screen. And the last thing before we leave, there is an invoice number on each screen, and it's shown in both places here, to indicate which invoice this actually was for this client on this date. That becomes critical when you're looking at the reports. Also, you can date stamp the actual uh, creation date up here by clicking and then clicking in this and dropping the calendar down to add that information in to this field above. Main menu will take you back to the main menu.
Okay. If you have any questions, you can use the support icon up here to find basic information and also how to connect with us to get uh, questions answered. Uh, remember, there is no charge ever for support for information about how to use the application. Thank you.